Do you get stuck balancing all those oxygens and hydrogens in an acid-base reaction? My name is Leah from LeahForSci.com, where you can find hundreds of study tips and tutorial videos. I also offer private online tutoring for chemistry as well as orgo, bio, and physics. And in this video, I will show you a trick for simplifying the balancing of acid-base reactions. An acid-base reaction is when you have an acid reacting with a base to give you water and salt as your final product. When you balance this reaction, you treat it just like any other reaction where you have to have the same number of atoms in your reactants match those atoms in the products. The first thing to do is complete this reaction. We know that the acidic hydrogen will react with the basic hydroxide to form a water molecule, and we also know that the cation from the base will react with the anion from the acid to give you a salt. And so the product of this reaction is H2O plus KNO3, giving me acid plus base to yield water and salt. When you balance a reaction, you are taught to balance the individual atoms. However, if you use the method I showed you in my previous video, you'll find yourself working a little too hard on these types of reactions. We have oxygen showing up in both nitrate, NO3, and hydroxide, OH. We have hydrogen showing up in the acid and in the base. So if you follow that method where you write a checklist of H, N, O, and K, you'll find yourself working a little too hard trying to keep track where every oxygen came from and where every hydrogen came from. So let me show you a trick. Any polyatomic ion or atoms that are grouped together that you can recognize in the reactants and then recognize unchanged in the products, keep it as is. Don't break it up. We have two of these scenarios in this reaction. Notice that nitrate is a spectator ion. It never changes in the reaction. So instead of thinking of it as being made up of the atoms N and O3, we'll simply look at it as a nitrate component and see how many nitrates we have on the left and the right. And the even more exciting trick is the acid and the base. Acid and base form water, but let's imagine that the water is not H2O, We'll think of it as having a purple hydrogen from the acid and a green hydroxide from the base. Water is H2O, but when you think of it as being composed of H and OH, it'll make it easier to balance because you can identify how many H's you have, how many OH's you have, without confusing where they come from. And so to write what I have in this reaction, I already have my nitrate, we'll have the purple hydrogen, we'll have the green hydroxide, and then we'll have our potassium. Now let's see how many we have. We have one nitrate on the left, one on the right. We have one acidic hydrogen on the right and one purple hydrogen in the HOH on the left. We have one hydroxide on the left and one hydroxide portion in the water molecule. And finally, we have one potassium. I purposely chose an easy example to start with, and everything is perfectly balanced as one-to-one, -one, but I want you to focus on not the fact that it was so easy to balance, but the trick that you can use to recognize where each atom or each part came from. So this happens to be balanced, but now what happens if we look at a more complex acid-base reaction? Let's take a look at what happens when you react phosphoric acid with calcium hydroxide to form water and salt. In this case, the salt is Ca3PO42. Instead of writing out every single atom that I have, I want to break it up into pieces. Let's see how we can apply this trick here. Of the atoms that we have, some of them show up in common polyatomics and we want to keep them together. First thing we'll do is change the acidic hydrogen to be purple and we'll change the basic hydroxide to be green. And now let's write out what we have. Purple acidic hydrogen, phosphate, which is a polyatomic ion that doesn't change. Notice I'm not focusing on the charge. The charge of phosphate is balanced in both the reactants and the products, but instead I want to focus on balancing the reaction, so we'll ignore the charges. We have calcium, and then we have the green basic hydroxide. I have three acidic hydrogens on the left, and of my HOH water molecule, I have one hydrogen. I have one phosphate on the left, two on the right, one calcium on the left, three on the right, two basic hydroxides on the left, and one on the right. At first glance, we have nothing balanced. When you get a scenario like this where nothing is balanced, 
You want to start with the most complex and then work your way to the simpler. If you start by balancing the hardest thing, that will typically stay balanced as you balance everything else. But if you start by balancing the simpler molecules first, you'll find yourself having to change those numbers. So we'll start with the calcium phosphate. I have one phosphate on the left and two on the right, so I'll place a two in front of the H3PO4. That means I now have two times three or six acidic hydrogens and two phosphates. The next thing I want to look at is calcium. I have three on the right and one on the left, so I place a three in front of calcium hydroxide. This gives me three calciums on the left, but I also have three times two for a total of six basic hydroxides. Look how simple this turned out. I have six acidic hydrogens, six basic hydroxides, so all I do is place a six in front of the water and update my hydrogen and hydroxide to six and six. And just like that, the entire molecule is balanced. Now I challenge you to take this molecule and try it where you write out every single atom and then come back to me and let me know in the comments if you found this trick to be any easier. So what do you think? Do you feel confident enough to conquer these chemistry topics on your own? Thing is, this short video was just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to understand in chemistry which cannot be taught in just 5 to 10 minutes. But luckily, I have prepared an exclusive video training that I am offering as a free gift to you. Trust me, if you're serious about chemistry, you can't miss this one. To claim your free gift, visit layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift. As a subscriber, you will receive exclusive email updates, including information regarding new videos, study tips, resources, and more. The URL again, layerforsci.com slash chemistry gift, all one word. A quick favor, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up. If you know anyone else struggling with this information, share with them too. They'll thank you for it. I'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below and let me know what you liked most about this video and, of course, if you have any questions. You can also say hi on Facebook by visiting me at facebook.com slash layerforsci. Psst, still here. Don't forget to subscribe.